All right, hello. We are back with uh, basic JavaScript today, and we're going to be working from this challenge, the return early pattern for functions. And uh, we won't have any chit chat in the beginning. We'll just go ahead and get started. When a return statement is reached, the execution of the current function stops and control returns to the calling location. <clears throat> We've got an example, it's a function, it's called my fun. And it console logs hello, then it returns world, and then it console logs bye bye. And then they call out the function. The above outputs hello to the console returns world, but bye bye is never output because the function exits at the return statement. And so it never gets called. Modify the function a b test so that if a or b are less than zero, the function will exit immediately. It, it will immediately exit with the value of undefined. Hint, remember the undefined, that undefined is, is a keyword, not a string. All right, so uh, So we don't use a switch statement, or we do? I think we can use condition, if condition. Okay, so if, because it's. ARB less than zero. Or B are less than, okay, yeah, yeah, we're using this like, yeah, less than. Okay, so if. Uh, yeah, a, <coughs> or B is less than zero. Okay. I think we should write A less than zero or B less than zero. Yeah, A less than zero or B less than zero. Two conditions, A and B separate. Separate, okay. Yeah. Less than and equal to. Is there equal? It's only less than. Only less than. Oh, only less than. <coughs> then R. There itself, inside that if after the A less than zero. In the same, in the same, yeah, inside. Uh, Use that R operator, just like you wrote before. After A less than zero, or B less than zero. You can finish with so B less than zero, yeah. A less than zero, or B less than zero. Oh, here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. B less than zero. Okay. And then return. Return under back. Okay. And that's it pretty much, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, can you show us the console? Put that uh, the yeah inside console and let's see. Sounds. 
माइनस वैल्यू माइनस टू type of ab test just add the type of before that function call inside the above function itself let's add type of before that yeah i'm typing it now it's just taking okay, okay. type of ab test the computer is not responding i type i typed it but it's just not okay. responding yeah. It's frozen up on me. I'm sorry. Wait, I can. Wait, what's up? There we go. Okay. Uh, move that semicolon out of that. Yeah. I don't know you have the semicolon in here. Yeah. Okay. So it's returning as undefined, and we can see that by the type of. All right, I think that's good enough. I'm gonna set this over here. All right. All right, you got that one. All right, submit. Okay, in the casino game, blackjack, a player can gain an advantage over the house by keeping track of the relative locate or number of high or and low cards remaining in the deck. This is called card counting. Having more high cards remaining in the deck favors, <laughs> favors the player. Each card is assigned a value according to the table below. When the card is positive, the player should bet high. When the count is zero or negative, the player should bet low. Right, so the count changes. When the cards are low, it goes positive. When it's in the middle, it stays a zero count. But then when you get higher in the cards, then it becomes a negative one. You'll write a card counting function. It will receive a card parameter, which can be a number or a string, and increment or decrement the global count variable according to the card today. All right, see the table. The function will then return a string with the current count and the string bet if the count is positive. All right, so return string. Hold if zero or negative count. I 
Okay. Okay. I think we will go with switch statement here because we are testing three conditions. Count and bet. Okay, there's zero negative. Current count and and uh, um, hold. Okay. All right, so we need, so this is gonna be the example, this will be the, the total current count and then hold or bet. And do not reset count to zero when value is seven, eight or nine, do not return an array do not include quotes, single or double, in the output. Don't you need to have quotes for the hold and bet there? First, uh, you have to decide whether to use switch case or if if we use the if we need to write if else three times otherwise we can use switch and yes I, i'm case. just telling, yeah i'm just telling that for us decide which way there is a switch this time go with switch i think we can practice a switch also. yeah i think yeah. switch i think switch too because there's yeah. so many options uh, yeah. okay so switch um, card bracket. Which card? No, 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 no. No, no. There's a like, another bracket. Functional parenthesis. Hold on. Sorry. Yeah. There is no space. I yeah, don't put space. Yeah. Inside that switch, you need to pass that. Yeah. Uh, okay. So inside here. Card, yeah. The value we are getting from that function. No, no, no. You wrote it. Just pause the value and open the curly braces. Okay. Then, okay, and then case we need to write three cases. Here. Uh, hold on, sorry. Um, oh, sorry. So it should be card. Think card. Card less than. First, we need to write the case. You have to say case two, case three, case four. Oh, okay. Oh uh, yes, case first. Case two. Case case two. Case two colon case, case. three colon. Hold on. Case six. Yeah, case unless six. I totally drew a blank on how I'm supposed to do this again. Yeah. Case two. Um, Before that colon, we need to write that our values. Yeah, the colon is after the. I think two R three R. Just use that R and command that value second. Two R three R four R five R six. Case. I'm sorry. I'm like just trying. I'm like totally drawing a blank on how to do this again. Case space two. Space one, two. There is no one. Call. Huh? There is no one. Two. No. Two. Then we need to call him. We need to check the values. Two, three, four, five, six. But all those 
increment one. No, 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 case three, yeah. five, six, they are the same. Elliot, add case three, case four. Couldn't case I just say, can I just say if no, it's just less than six? And, okay. and higher than one? Elliot, is there a way? To share but values two or we can edit together. No, unless we use this screen bar or something. No, 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 no. There was Andrew. I don't know how he did it, but he was sharing me his screen. I was able to edit. From the same screen? Yeah. There was like control something. I don't know. Ilya, do you know how to share your screen so that we can edit? Okay, I think the value in the case, in the case we need to add. Uh, one sec, I don't know what that just said. No, 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 no. I think my daughter just messed this up. Okay, I think okay. you should just have control, not, Jamal. Okay. Will test, will okay. test yeah. Jamal, uh, maybe. Can you remind the counter there? Yeah. Can yeah. you type in in my? Uh, yeah. Can you click in there? Yeah, I can click, but it's not right. Mm. Uh, we cannot see anything. Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know why it's going back to the screen. I'm not doing that. Um, uh, I don't know how he did it. It, he he worked with them this. Give mouse control to. I think that. Is it like control something? Yeah, I have to do something in my privacy settings. Uh, apps. Uh, Zoom. Yeah. Okay, I just have to do this. Okay, hold on. Unlock. Okay, now. Can see. Okay. Okay. So now, can you. Okay. Now try. Okay. Yeah, there you go. I can, okay, listen. Yes, okay. <clears throat> now this case, and it's slow, but case three. Ah, uh, okay. Case four. Because without a break, yeah. Because they are the same. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> and there's there's no way to do like, Case six. Yeah. Yes. Then, then I say. Now you would uh, increment, increment the count. by um, one count gets incremented. Yeah. Just like this. And then, yeah, and then a break. Yeah. Yes. You break. And then we do six, case seven, <clears throat> eight, nine. Are you editing? I don't know. It's it I didn't, for me. I didn't do anything. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. It freezes. I think we broke the internet. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I didn't do anything. Um, okay. Because it freezes for me. Okay. Okay, I think, I think yeah, maybe give it a second. What? <clears throat> I can share my screen then. Ah, uh, gosh. What is, why does it keep doing that? I don't know what's going on. Okay. Yeah, I finished it, I think, now. Okay, I think we're back. I can do again? Okay. Yeah, I think we're back, yeah. It uh, just had a panic attack or something. Okay. No, semicolon. So, <clears throat> now you say get 10 and come. 
kid, whatever, J. What about seven, eight, nine? <clears throat> they are returning zero, so it doesn't. What it yeah, might have nothing will happen. Then. Yes. Anything other than increment or dec decrement. Um. <laughs> Super slow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we got to think what's going on here. I mean, it's. Uh, communicating across an entire ocean. All right, and then count, minus, minus, break. Yes. Yeah, I don't know, I can't see anything now. <laughs> uh, does it do that again? I didn't do anything. Yeah, yeah, it just, now it came. Okay, yeah. Because it, it, it like buffer flow or something, I don't know. It yeah, it's got, it's, got, it's, got, it's got to think about it. Yes. And then, and then we need to uh, decide if... From the... I think we need to do an if statement now, right? Where did you use wind? Now I think we'll need an if statement, right? Then we return it. We return from here. This we return the. It says that to return the count, right? What did it say? If count equals zero or negative. Yeah, I think we need to create an if statement for these. No, we just we, like this example. We need to return the total count, the, the count at the end. Of, no, it, it says that if. And if then hold or bet based on if the number is negative, then we should say hold. So I think we can add on this on the return. It's just a string. Yeah, uh, now if. Yeah, but if it needs to be an if statement, I think, because it needs to say if. Well, we can use if positive, uh, then then bet. If if negative, then yeah. And that in this one, okay. Can I write here? Zero or negative? Yeah. Yeah. Go can ahead. I write here? Okay. Yeah, I think it just needs to be an if statement of. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> if count. Yes. Return. I can write this part, I think, if it will be fast. I mean, I want to use ternary without if, like ternary operator. <coughs> okay. <coughs> I don't know that I've actually learned that yet. You can go ahead. Stop. Or you could just do it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> it might work tomorrow. Okay, now... Uh, To return from if condition within if condition. Return like this. Uh, return. We can do like uh, count. Count greater than zero. If you wrote you return that. It'd be greater than or equal to. Or no, no, greater, greater, this is from You want to write conditional operator there? Okay. No, yeah. I'm just writing bet, else hold. Like this. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, and then you should return the count uh, within huh? two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I will add it count. Should, it should be uh, count uh, space bet or hold. In here, I will do like uh, count 
plus there is space also space plus whatever this yeah the operator uh -huh. what about now okay you want to access it okay we can try let's see Okay, I might stop the uh, remote. Yeah. Might work a little faster. Yeah. Uh, I think. Okay, let me see. If... The braces are mismatching, I think. In the... huh? After Sorry? greater than zero, You have the closing brace after greater than zero. I think it should move to the end. This? Yeah. It should okay. be holding all this. Yeah. You can add another another operator. No. Another okay. parenthesis. Where? Okay. Yeah, yeah. There, at the end. We have opened two, but yeah. closed one. <coughs> we need one at the end. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Console dot log. Okay. Yes. Close it. Console dot log. We have log for only one. Yeah. Let me do. So that's at the beginning, and then this one will be at the end. Okay. And we'll see what it's saying. Mm, it's not giving us it again, is it? No, just just run, run the, okay. run the call, call, call their test. So they... Yeah, so it's it's running all of these in behind the scenes, and then once they play the ace, then. It's a hold because it's counted all of this, like along the way. Yeah. Once the check it, run yeah, it. Because this one's increment, increment, hold, and then negative, negative. So that yeah. nets that nets uh, zero. Zero. Yeah, because this one's one one. I don't know what's going on. Uh, sorry. Okay, so yeah, it's it's netting one. I'm netting zero because this is one, one, zero, and then minus one, minus, minus one. one. So it it nets a zero hold. But the, if we did this one, it would be uh, one, it, would, it would be bet. Yeah. Uh, okay, I think. Yeah, this uh, one's gonna console log bet. Uh, should I? Should we add the yeah. seven eight? Can I add them? Because it's affecting. Once run the test and see how. Uh, yeah. Could could you run? Yeah, I think it's gonna pass. Yeah. Yeah. Pass. Yeah. Because it was it was outputting the correct. Uh, yeah, it was working. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Okay. Okay, good. Yeah. Good work. I, I've never seen this. So. Ternary? Uh, yeah, walk me through that. Ter ternary. That ternary operator. Go ahead, three. three if, uh, if the value is true, it will we'll get that bit. If that condition is false, we'll get that hole. Okay. So the question mark. Yeah, after the question mark, we are giving two alternatives. If the condition is true, it will give one value. If the condition is false, it will return the second value. So basically, it's a faster uh, yeah. if else. It's short, shortcut to write two if statements. Yeah, it's a one line if else. Yeah. yeah. Because it's a Boolean, so it's true or false. Yeah. And this is your or? Yeah, similar to like that. The colon is an or. Yeah, we can assume like that. 
And this is condition. The Checking con the condition. This is saying it's a condition. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. All right, good deal. <laughs> yeah, moving on. <laughs> Okay, this one is counting cards. And Jamal is a Turner. Turner, I don't know how to spell that. Turner. Yeah. Turner. Yeah, wait. Turner. I don't know, I'm probably going to spell this operator. For the hold and bit. Okay. Okay. And yeah. Okay. Anybody else want to share their screen? Uh, I don't know. Uh, let me share. I have some bug here. Oh, with your last one? Mm, yeah, this. Yeah, go ahead. All right. You are re returning, I think. You should. Is it returning? Um, you are returning from that switch scroll statement. Up, scroll up, scroll up, and your code. Just increment there, I think. You are returning. Yeah, okay. take out the returns before the counts. Okay. Is that now it should work, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> All right. Anybody else? Yeah, you can keep going, this one. Oh, <laughs> I just out. Okay. Yeah, just you can keep sharing. I have a, a little one. No problem. Okay. Let's... That that was half of my slowness there. Sorry. The other half was just um, I'm brain deficient. <clears throat> All right. We mean JavaScript objects. You may have heard the term object before. Objects are similar to arrays except that instead of using index to access and modify the data you access the data in objects to what are called properties objects are useful for storing that data in a structured way and can represent real world objects like a cut here's a sample of cut object var cut is okay, it's an object. Uh, the cut object with the properties of name, whiskers, legs, four, tails, in a miss. And here we have an array. In this e example, all the properties are stored as strings, such as name and legs, and tails. However, you can also use numbers as a properties. You can even omit the codes for single word string properties as follows mm. okay this make we can omit also the codes all right however if your object has any non-string properties javascript will automatically type cast them as a string Make an object that represents a dog. 
which is my dog, okay. Uh, contains the property's name. Name and a string. Name. Should I put in a uh, Yeah, oh. just name it any, any name, provide any name. Yeah. It could be any name. Name. Bobby. And um, Lex. Lex. And Tails. What Tails means? This can be just one for yeah. Okay, and friends. No. Mm -hmm. It's an array. Give array of. Well, uh, okay, it's an array. Yeah. You can send the subjects property to whatever values you want as long as name is a string our numbers there's our numbers and for size another okay <clears throat> uh so friends okay friend one and friend two okay and what else? That's it. That's it for this. Should I do this? For I, you may spill that, friends. Okay. So that's it, right? I think we. Okay. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. So which means an array property can hold any type of value, a string, number, object, or even an array. Yeah. Yes. Accessing object properties with dot notation. There are two ways to access the properties of an object. Dot notation and bracket notation, similar to an array. Dot notation is what you use when you know the name of the property you are trying to access ahead of time. Here's a sample of using dot notation to read an object's property. <clears throat> Okay, here's another object with the property one and property two. And val property one val is object, this one dot proper one or property one. So we can access the value of property one by dot notation. Same thing for property two. Read in the property values test object. Okay, we have an object here. Using a dot notation, set the variable hat value. Okay, it's already given here. Equal to the object's property. Uh huh. Change this line. Yeah. Mm. So read the property values of that using a dot notation. Okay. Read the values of hat and shirt. Yeah. So is just it complete those sentences. Sir. After that, test object dot hat. That's it. You have already that set up where after the test object put that dot hat. That's it. Yeah, there. Yeah. Something no. You mean like this? Yeah. And shared. Shared value and just dot yeah. shared. That's it. Yeah. Just okay. Only 
this is like if you want to store the value of this property then you put in the variable yeah we are putting it in a variable if you yeah. don't, we can we can console it i think to, to see the values okay console add value. I see. Oh. Okay. Hello. Yeah, I see. Yeah. yeah. And we can also see this one. Yes. It's working. Yeah, it's working. Okay. okay, I have five more minutes, so we can do one task. Okay, accessing object properties with bracket notation. The second way to access the properties of an object is bracket notation. If the property of the object you are trying to access has a space in its name, you will need to use bracket notations. However, you can still use bracket notations on object properties without space. Here is a sample of using bracket notation to read an object's property. <clears throat> okay, my object. Okay, so this kind of property name, but with a space. And if you want to access, yeah. So if we put dot here, then it's, it's going to be. It won't make sense because it ignore the yeah. name part. So it's not like a single word. And, yeah, it will take up yeah. two space only. Yeah, and what about like uh, in the previous, it, it was saying that if you know the name of the properties, you can use dot notation. Yeah. But it, it, that means that if we don't know the name of the property, can we use this one, the bracket notation or? I think we need to try with something like uh, array indexes first. Uh-huh. Okay. Anyway, we can access like this with the bracket notation. Now these are the property names. Note that property names with a space in them must be in a quotes, single or double. Yeah. Okay. Read the values of the properties on entry and the drink of test object using a bracket notation and assign them to entry value and drink for, okay. So they are assigned here. Yeah. So now we just add do, 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 do. Yeah, I think I can take the whole. And same thing. The drink, I think. We need that drink. We should drink. You should use bracket notation twice. You have the space before that drink. In the second one, you have one space. Yeah. Now let's mm -hmm. Yeah, so if we need to console this. Hamburger. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. Okay, so by this, I'm gonna stop here. Do you mind if we continue and you watch the recording? Or catch up with us uh, on the one. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll continue. I'll watch the video. Okay, I'll try to get it up as soon as possible. Okay. At least this one, so that you can get yeah. that that going. Yeah, and also I'll I'll try to watch the the morning the the react. There is some video, some part that I haven't seen. Anyway, anyway, see you tomorrow on the react. What was oh. that last part? Sorry, oh. I lost my headphones. <clears throat>
yeah i mean uh there was the last there was one one task that i haven't i couldn't catch up with you guys so i'm gonna watch it maybe the, did you already put it in the youtube the react the, the react one from last night yeah from, uh no i have not no okay i'm gonna see that okay. all right guys see you then. all right bye bye Ayuel, would you like to share your screen and pick up uh, where we're at? Going once. Ayuel, are you alive? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think he's dead, you guys. Srinka can't take it. She can't. Do you want to take the next uh, challenge? Oh, yeah, for that I need to open my free code camp. sharing my screen now. Right. Yeah. Here is the second use case of using bracket notations. Accessing object properties with variables. Another use of bracket notation on objects is to access a property which is stored as a value of a variable. This can be very useful for iterating through an object's properties or when accessing a lookup table. Here is an example of using a variable to access a property. Here he is using variable to access a property. If we see the example, we have some object here which, and he stored one of the property in variable called here in dog, my dog. And <coughs> Here he using that variable name to access the property. My dog. Yeah, for hunter. Yeah. Yeah. So this is another use case of we can store the property name in variable and we can use that variable name to get the property value. Yeah. And this is one example. And another way you can use this concept is when the property's name is collected dynamically during the program execution. It means if the property name is collected dynamically from somewhere during the program execution. Let's see this example. Here we have some object with property name, prop name John. And there is one function to prefix some string to it. So he's prefixing some S to that name. Now he has some prop equal to prop name, some prop. will return the S John, I think. Here it will return S John because we are prefixing S to that string here. Now some object of some prop. So we will just test this example. Now that we do not use quotes around the variable name when we using when we using it to access the property because we are using the value of the variable, not the name. So in the previous example, we used quotes around that name inside the bracket notation. Something like this. We read we used quotes around the string, but here we are accessing variable, so we we should avoid this quotes here. We should write something like this. So use the player number variable to look up for it. player 16 in test object. Using bracket nation, then assign the name to the player. 
only child. So here asking claim number variable. So we need to assign 16 here, I think. And we should use that variable to access the player with variable 16. So player name word. Here we should not use quotes around here because we are using variable name inside brackets. And let's console the player. Yeah, we are getting Montana. Do you follow the Elliot? Is it confusing or clear? No, no. Um, sorry, I was getting interrupted. Uh, okay. But yeah. Here we are using variables to access property. So yeah. some object. Yeah, I'm, so tra you, I'm tracking with this one, yeah. You should see this example here. We are storing the value in the variable and we are using this variable to access that property. Mm -hmm. So here we are using that variable inside the square okay, brackets number. too. In other way also we can, how we can do this is without variable. Something like this. Yeah. Yeah, these are all uh, NFL quarterback uh, numbers. And names. This is Joe Namath, Joe Montana, Johnny Unitas. They're all Hall of Fame quarterbacks. Yeah, yeah. I got, I got the result. Though. Okay. The, this is second use case of using bracket notation. In the previous one, we use quotes around the string to access. Uh -huh. The name, if there is something, if something, there is, is there any space between the name, something like this? Yeah. We use bracket notation in the, mm -hmm. here we have some space here. Now, yeah. in this one, we are use, accessing the prop using variable. So we assign our property name to some variable and we are using that variable inside our square bracket here. Yeah. And this is, but. We should not keep quotes around this variable name because it is a variable. Right. Yeah. It's a stored Actually, value. Yeah. Shall we move on to the next challenge? Yeah, we can go to the next one. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I I prefer the va the variables because then it makes it easier. Especially if you're giving. You're giving it a proper, uh, uh, like a, a meaningful variable name. Yeah. And next, updating object properties. You can update its properties at any time, just like you would update any other variable. You can use either dot or bracket notation to update. For example, let's look at our dog object. Here we have some properties with name, legs, tails and friends. Since he is particularly happy dog, let's change his name to happy camper. Here is how we update this object's name property. Just like before how we access, we just accessing that name, our dog.name and assigning some new value here. So our dog.name will take new value now. And uh, this is using dot notation here. And here we are using bracket notation. Our dog square bracket name equal to happy clamper. So we are giving different name here. And now if we access our dog, our dog dot name, we will get this updated name here. So we can do this in two ways using dot notation and using bracket notation. We're just assigning a new value here. And coming to our challenge update the my dog object's name property. Let's change her name from coder to happy coder. So we can do it in a two ways, using our dot notation or object bracket notation. We will go with some 
so we want to update the name so first we need to access that name my dog dot name so it gives name of the dog we are we are sending some new name to it. Mm -hmm. happy coda yeah and if you read it now here control dot log my dog dot name you can see it here <clears throat> it's yeah. updated to happy coder it's clear yeah diamond stand shall i move on to the next challenge yeah yeah yeah, yeah keep going, keep going. Uh, uh, if you have want to ask something we will stop yeah just gone yeah, yeah I, I said okay. gone yeah okay the, this one is a bit easier to understand i think yeah the, these yeah. concepts are pretty pretty basic yeah, it's just straightforward yeah. Add new property and here add new property properties to a javascript object the previous one we updated the existing one here we are adding new one so you can add new properties to existing javascript objects the same way you would modify them here is how we would add a bark property to our dog so we want to add bark property to object our dog here our dog is an object and we are adding property bark and we are giving some value bow bow here this is using dot notation and we can also do that using bracket notation like this so now when we evaluate our dog dot bark we will get this his bark so now in our challenge we need to add a bark property so for that first we need my dog bark the value is small oof. so it creates a new property in our my dog object if we log this value here i think my dog bark yeah we are getting that oof here yeah and also if you just uh, console log the, yeah you see the object here we are adding new property to existing object we can do it in the same way like in the previous example here we are two ways dot notation and bracket notation we can do it in any way now here we have delete properties from a javascript object yeah. we can use also delete properties from objects like this here he using delete operator in front of the property so delete the tails property from my dog to delete and some property from javascript we use this delete operator delete and the property so here we asking to delete tails yeah. write the delete property here delete and our object is my dog and we want to delete the tails so yeah. it will delete the tails property from our object if we try to console tails let's see what's the output here the whole my, my dog only my dog let's see tails yeah i think we are getting not some nothing so let's see type of is there any so we are getting undefined because we deleted it I can we just go so uh, object my dog only is it clear Elliot? yeah i i'm just doing the console log part now can console log only the object okay 
we just use delete operator yeah to delete some property yeah it's working on my side we we can go on let's move on to the next challenge see how it is So, let's check where we are exactly in the curriculum right now. Using objects for lookup. Objects using objects for lookups. How far we completed here? Yeah, we have reached maybe seven percent. So we reached this till here. So yeah, we have left like thirty percent. Think. I think in one more day we will finish this basic job. So I think. Yeah, let's do like uh, five or something more, and then. <laughs> Yeah, here is using objects for lookups. Objects can be thought of as key value storage. We are using this is a key, one is a key, and this that is a value. Key value storage, like a dictionary. If you have a table <coughs> of data, you can use an lookup values rather than switch, rather than a switch statement or an if else chain. This is most useful when you know that your input data is limited to a certain range. Here is an example of simple reverse alphabet lookup. Here we have some object alpha with all the alphabets here. And alpha 2 gives a y. So we are sent it to alpha 2. And alpha 24 gives c. So they are sent in a reverse way from 26 to z. They create an object with alphabets in a reverse order here. So that to we are convert the switch statement into an object called lookup, use it to look up value and assign the associated string to the result variable. So convert the switch statement into an object called lookup. Use it to look up value and assign the associated string to the result variable. Here we have some switch statement. And what he is so asking to. We have to create an object lookup, like yeah, var. Lookup. Yeah, lookup object. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Just here we need to create some. Or object. some object here. The case will be the property and the value. Is right. You have to copy all this. Alpha. Alpha. And then Adams. Adams, yeah. So, comma. Um. Bravo. Okay, so this one's oh yeah, it's a good bit of removing. Boston. Mm -hmm. And Charlie. I think you can do a find and replace for this. Right? Okay. In the above one? Yeah. I, I think um, you can do a find and replace. Yes. Okay. Because don't but, you need that? I think this is okay. Yeah, yeah if you do, if you, the object from the table. If you press yeah. uh, command or control F, then you can access a control find and then 
for that we need to completely yes put the case statements and everything here um um echo and then echo we're mm -hmm. saying only change the code above the line yeah fox in, in the yeah. comment he asked to write uh, yeah yeah fox throat fox throat frank frank That's you can uh, comment this out this is the object no. and then what he is asking for so the return, value return, the return. and assign the associated string to the result value so here we need to look up for some okay we need to push that object table like something he's asking for something like that look up look up of value yeah, yeah. he's value. asking for something like this yes yes and then return result that's it and return result let's check yeah. Charlie of only friend. He's asking to okay, let's do this. Uh, does it matter? No, it should be getting something. Charlie of only friend. Why are we getting this error here? Let's remove this comment completely. So, I think you have to bring that that one down because it's undefined. Because yeah, I think. yeah. Yeah, yeah, now it should yes. work. <laughs> it's just assigning yeah. undefined. <laughs> so we replace that switch statement with an object, and we are looking for that value in this object and returning that value here. Yeah. So it's looking small and clean here, I think, compared yeah. to the switch yeah Ob object is very nice <laughs> just you guys just try it and we will move on to that yeah let's move oh, okay uh, let me see i'm still working on this one okay okay uh let me see okay so look up And then, okay, look up and then value return. Ba, ba, ba. Mm. Ah, okay. Now uh, I want to do. Val, I need to be Val, is that right? Inside of the bracket notation. Yeah. Okay. Look up bracket value. And uh Results equals okay, and then that, that, you just need to set that to uh, result. Yeah, I think it mentioned there already return result one. Okay, okay, and assign the associated string. Okay, okay, I think I got it. Uh, 
I'm saying I have a, an error there. Yeah, look at the code here on my screen. Bar lookup. We moved that result variable to below that object, to bottom of that object. Yeah. And also, Shrink, uh, uh, you can also eliminate uh, assigning a new result. You can just return. Yeah, we can return. Uh, we can return directly here. I think. Yes. Yes. Something like that. For four months. Something like click up. Look up. Well, yeah. That's unnecessary. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure why it's giving me an error. The shared screen, you will see, and I'll stop my magic. Okay. Not modify uh, it. sure. Okay. It's saying that it should not modify the return statement. Uh, okay. Shouldn't you, though? Uh, show me, show the screen, and we will see what's. Okay. I had it like this. But then no, no. you are assigning in a reverse way here lookup value result result equal to lookup value you are lookup you are assigning result to lookup value means you are updating the object not reading that object here reverse that result equal to oh, lookup here result. yeah okay. equal to yeah now I think it's saying it I have an error there. I don't know why that is. Where? Unknown, unexpected token. Uh, you have that comma after that result variable in, in that line three. Line three. You have comma there. You need to mention. Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't know why that. And in line six, equals lookup equals. Uh, so look up. Lookup equal. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Now I think it works. Okay, let's console. Bye. Check it again. Yeah. And then, um, what's the other one? Uh, Echo. Uh, no, no, I had to fast track. Fast, fast track. Yeah, okay. <coughs> All right, sweet. Let me get that. <laughs> okay. I'll keep going. All right. Think it you. All right. Testing objects for properties. Sometimes it is useful to check if the property of a given object exists or not. We can use the dot as own property, uh, put in prop name method of objects to determine if that object has the given property name. Dot has own property ha returns true or false if the property is found or not. All right, so there's no property for middle. There's only top and bottom. So because of that, this one returns false. And the top returns two because there is a property with yeah, top. We have top, yeah. So on the top, they're wearing hats, and bottom, they're wearing pants. But they would have to add a middle for shirt or something like that. Yeah. But it's not there right now, so they don't return anything. All right. Modify the function. Check object. Uh, function check object to test my object for check prop. 
If the property is found, return that property's value. If not, return not found. All right. So, so we can do we if, can do that we can do yeah. an if statement or we yeah. can do that ternary, but I'll I'll try an if statement. Um, if um, they check for the has own property condition inside if condition. Uh, so it's my object. Dot has own property and they said check prop. Yeah. Check. I think pass that as this because we are getting that as a parameter, I think. Uh, if you repeat course, it will consider it as a string. So we are getting that check prop as a parameter to function. So write without course. Okay, check. Read it as a variable. Yeah. Uh, check prop. What I need to declare it as a variable first? Uh, no, no. You are getting oh, it's already in a function. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I see. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, we're within the function. Okay. Let's forget that. Yeah, okay. if it is true, we need to return its value. Uh, uh, so. Return. return that property's value so yeah. return um yeah my object yes uh, my object just like in the previous example we used variables like check use that no. here unity just access the property value yeah, it's it's uh, going slow. Okay. My, oh yeah. Value. No, no. We are the key is check prop, so it is a variable. So we use bracket notation for using variables inside. We just did it in the last example. When we are using variables, we use bracket notation to access. Okay. So here the check prop is like a variable. Check prop. Okay. Yeah. And, and then the below, just change it into not found. Not found, yeah, because that's the else. Oh. I think without giving else also, it will work, I think. Because if the condition is met, it encounter that return and the function will exit from there itself. Okay, let's yeah. just check if it passes. Yeah. Okay. And then let me say gives up something uh, else. Pop. Hat. I'll just say hat. And yeah. And then let me uh, no. Log it, I think. Console yeah. log it. I'm gonna log it. I just set up a keyword in my editor. Uh, I was watching a Traversy Media thing, and he just does CL and then tab, and it does console log. Okay, I think that works on VS Code, I think, but here. Yeah. Yeah, here it won't. Yeah, obviously, but. Okay. Yeah, I won't even swipe that. All right. Uh, can somebody take over? I need to go check on my son real quick. Okay. I'll be. I'll just stop sharing. I'll be back then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you.
Oh, great. Um, yes. I'm on previous challenge, I'm moving on to the testing object for properties. Where is this? Okay, manipulating complex objects. Tahir, are you able to see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Here is manipulating complex objects. Sometimes you may want to store data in flexible data structure. A JavaScript object is one way to handle flexible data. They allow for arbitrary combinations of strings, numbers, booleans, arrays, functions, and objects. Here is an example of complex data structure. Here we have an array. Our music is an array. Inside that array, we have one object. This is an object. Inside that object, we have some properties artist, title, release year. And here, formats is uh, again an array here. And this goal is a Boolean. This is Boolean. This is an array. This is a number. And these two things are strings. So this object is inside an array. This is kind of some complex data structure. I'm sorry, are you using both, please? Are you using both of the chairs? Just... Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much. Yes. So next. <laughs> uh, I'm back, guys. Did I miss one? OK. No, no, we yeah. haven't done anything. Okay. Here is a here is the next challenge: manipulating complex objects. Sometimes you may want to store data in a flexible data structure. A JavaScript object is one way to handle flexible data. They allow for arbitrary combinations of strings, numbers, booleans, arrays, functions, and objects. Here is an example of a complex data structure. If you see here in example, we have one variable called our music. And this is an array. Our music is an array. Inside that array, we have an object. Inside that object, we have different properties. The artist, title, release year, formats, and goal. This artist is a string, title is a string, and release year is a number here. And coming to formats is an array. And gold is a Boolean value. Here you can see different types of values. So this is kind of a complex data structure. We are putting object inside an array. Even inside that array, we have inside that object, we have some array and different values. So like strings, numbers, array, and this is Boolean. So this is kind of complex structure. This is an array which contains one object inside. The object has various pieces of metadata about an album. It also has nested formats array. Nested formats array. If you want to add more album records, you can do this by adding records to the top level array. You can do this by adding records to the top level array. Okay. We can push to that array. If you want to add some records to it, objects hold data in a property which has a key value format. In the example above, artist is a property that has a key of artist and value of Daft Punk. And here, JavaScript object notation or JSON is a related data interchange format used to store data. Have you guys heard about JSON? Yeah, I've heard of JSON. Yeah. This is actually JSON here, I think. 
it is similar to javascript object but here the keys also quote placed in quotes mm -hmm. if you observe that keys and values are placed in quotes and coming to our javascript object okay it is also in quotes okay this is in json everything will be placed in quotes the keys i think so this is a similar to javascript object we use this format to interchange data between the server and between computers so it is a format to data interchange it is a format for data interchange you need to place a comma after every object in the array unless it is the last object here in the array we need to place comma after every object mm -hmm. here i think here after every every object means here yeah, here yeah. after here we need to place comma unless it is a lost object we need to separate that objects in inside array with comma oh, yeah 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 within the array yeah. yeah it's like an array of different values different uh, yeah. uh, uh, sets now here in our challenge add a new album to the my music array add artist and title strings release year number and formats array of strings so okay we need to just copy this and he's asking to add here so we can place com put comma here and add this object here okay. yeah I think we can avoid some typing here by copying the board. Yeah. Yeah, just if you want to place some more object, we just place comma here and we'll start hints here and we'll type artist title everything. These are this is one value instead of an array, and this is one value instead of an array. And if you want to access this is inside an array. So if you want to access this object, you will use index, right? Mm -hmm. Suppose I want to access what is the name of this object? Yeah, for my music. My music, okay. So I want to access first value, I will use my music. Two, three, zero. zero. Uh, so it's giving as an object, I think, zero dot artist we will give the artist names of that first object and then artist if i want something title of that first object first album we can try title here You'll get the title of that first piano man, right? If you want for the second, we will just use the array indexes here, like this. Shall I move on to next one? Yeah, let's see. Is yeah, it clear? I yeah. Oh, Miss Vin's back. Yeah, I'm back. Okay. Welcome, Ms. Thanks. We are here at uh, manipulating complex objects, Ms. Bin. Yeah, we just did that one. Yeah, we did that one. Let's say, shall I move on to next challenge? Yeah. Let's see what is the next one. If you, if you if, want to give it a try, just go ahead. I will get accessing nested objects. Here, the next challenge is accessing nested objects. Yes. The sub properties of objects can be accessed by chaining together the dot or bracket notation. We can access the sub properties by chaining together the dot or bracket notation 
here is a nested object if you see in our object we have storage our storage is an object inside that storage we have different objects one is disk and the second one is an object called cabinet and this is a single property i think here if i want to access cabinet top drawer this one we are chaining the values the main object name is our storage and the next cabinet and why we are using bracket notation here because there is a space in this name if you observe there is a space between top and drive here so we are using bracket notation otherwise we can use the dot notation there inside that object we are using the get accessing the folder two so we are here to get here we are our storage dot cabinet dot top drive dot folder two this is a chain to read this value and here in desk here we are reading desk drive this one this property to read this property we need to chain our storage dot desk dot drive yeah so then we can so we can get this value this is chaining the properties to get in sub proper sub objects access the my storage object and assign the contents of the glow box property to the glow box contents variable use bracket notation for properties with space in their name so here we have space in our property name so here we should use bracket for this yeah. and here is asking to access inside glow box we need, we need to access this glow box so yeah. from, we should start from here my storage then dot inside it is inside so my storage dot inside and here we have space so we use square bracket instead of dot so my storage dot inside square bracket glow box my storage dot inside dot cap here we use we are using square bracket because there is a space glow box you forgot the card now let's print the value Hello. you forgot the card okay dot card dot in dot inside inside after my storage yeah my storage inside glow box is there here <coughs> Did you get the the car in the my storage? It's the it's the top uh, property. Yeah, my storage. My storage dot car dot inside. Okay, it's it is inside car, right? I missed that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's the first. Uh, yeah, now we are property. getting that value. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. about if we have an array inside the cabinet object? How can we access? Is it the yeah. same way we would do? Yeah. Inside cabinet. Suppose okay, I will show that. We use that one, square bracket notation. Would you basically index it? Yeah. No, no, no. After that, we'll just use. Suppose we have some array. We will just here. We just use the square bracket, and in place of glow box, we'll use that index of an array. Let's say some array here. Is this your dot nesting? 
how to access something from the survey yeah for the yeah here inside we have an array so here we'll get into something like dot after inside we'll dot a array and here we'll use k bracket to read the property we, here we pass the index of array from where we want to read that array yeah, yeah, yeah. something like this there will be no glove box if you want to access something some array from yes. there you will follow this yeah <laughs> hello yeah i'm with you yeah so you, yeah you would access the array just like you do an index yeah using index we can access that array We need to change this back to. I'm curious how. Inside, yeah, accessing the <coughs> box. Yeah. Yeah, that one's good. We can. How much more time do you guys have? We made a good bit of progress today. Okay, what is the next challenge? Mm. Shall we stop here or we'll continue? Um, I, let me see what, uh, what we have ahead. Because it looks like we're about to do... Yeah, let's go through to this record collection and then let's stop. Uh, that's like this one and then the next one, I think, and then we can stop because then we'll start with loops. Is everybody good with that? Yeah, we're good. Okay. And the next one is? Okay. Have you all completed that challenge? Or? The uh, nested array and um no we haven't oh if they are okay then we'll move on to the next challenge otherwise we can wait some time yeah we haven't done this one i think they are working on something were you guys up with this one jamal no <coughs> nice one you're still no, working we you're ready to start this one? Yeah, we can. Okay. Yeah, let's continue, Shrikan. Yeah, here the next one is accessing nested arrays. As we have seen here examples, objects can contain both nested objects and nested arrays. Similar to accessing nested objects, array bracket notation can be chained to access nested arrays. Here is an example of how to access a set array. Here we have some example with set is an array. Inside that we have some. We have two objects in that. In that we have. So. Yeah, I think that was specifically array, we can what use you're, it. you're asking. Yeah. It's now, yeah. Yeah, the previous question. Yeah. yeah. Here, the objects are array values. So we can access array values using index. Square bracket. So our object. And that object, he accessing the name of this person. Okay. 
zero. Second Long. three. Yeah, second. Yes. One means the, this one. So he is accessing this stock. Yes. This is, a, one. this is an area. So our pets zero will comes here, and from our pets zero names dot names will take till here, and names square bracket one will return this. And the same way, our pets one will return this object. Inside that, we have names array. Our pets one names dot zero will return this spot. Our pets zero. Uh, our pets one will return will return this. And inside that, we have names. So our pets one dot name bracket zero will return this value here. So retrieve the second tree from the variable my plants. Using object dot and array bracket notation, so they are asking to retrieve the second tree from my plants. Here we have my plants. Um, this is flowers object, and this is trees object. So he is asking to retrieve this second tree. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Here. First, my plants. The second X, second one. So, use index inside that. So, my plants one is an object now. So, inside that, we want to access list. So, list. List is an again I will use this second trick. So we will okay. yeah. So we are getting the second tree name from that my plants array here. Yes, run this test. Yeah, I'm with you. I got the pine. Anybody need to stop or we can go to the record collection? Everybody good? Okay. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I think we can go. Here we have, so I think it's a, a big challenge. Like that. Record collection. Here we have record collection challenge next. You are given a JSON object representing a part of your music album collection so this is a json music album collection each album has several properties and unique and a unique id number as its key so this is the key and it has some information about that album so this is the album key ID number as its key. Not all ones have complete information. Okay. Not all albums have complete information. Variety of function which takes an album's ID, a property, and a value to modify the data in the collection. Variety of function which takes an album's ID, a property, prop like artist tracks value like addicted to the to modify the data in this collection. If the property is not tracks and value is not empty, update or set the value for the record album's property. If property is not tracks and value is not empty, update or set the value for the record album's property. Your function must always return the entire collection object. There are several rules for handling incomplete data. I think we should write some 
conditions to meet these rules if prop is tracks but the album doesn't have a tracks property create an empty array before adding the new value to the album's corresponding property if prop is tracks and value is not empty push the value so if there is no tracks value in that object create an array and push it if there is a tracks array inside that all object just push it if value is empty delete the given prop property from the value if the prop empty value to that function we should delete that so i think it's a bit of complicated challenge it takes much some time everyone just read that conditions and the challenge yeah. and break it into some this is the collection yeah just can you do it like one by one first create a function and yeah those values and we yes. have the function here update records and we need to return the collection and if you see here json dot parse and we are using json dot stringify collection means we are converting that json data into javascript object using this json dot yeah they've already got the uh, the one thing that says your function must always return the entire collection object it's already returning that yeah so uh, that part the function is there you are passing id prop and value and yeah. we need to write some conditions to meet these rules we need to break each rule into some condition here here we are getting some props and if the prop value is not tracks and value is not empty update or set the value for the record albums so if prop is not tracks and value is not empty update or set the value for the record this is one condition here yeah there's one when it's not uh when it's not empty update but then when it is empty then you need to create the new you need to add the new value for the properties prop is tracks let's break it into yeah there's two there's two ifs if prop is tracks but the album doesn't have a tracks or oh, no there's multiple ifs wow okay prop is tracks empty array before adding a new value to the album so here we need to check has own property to test the object has a tracks property in it or not prop equals tracks and create an empty array before adding a new value to the album corresponding to the prop is tracks and value is not empty not empty if we are getting ids right using this id you can read that so Okay. 
ऑप्शन property is not tracks value is not empty okay. prop tracks or the r bond doesn't have a tracks property create an empty array before adding the new value to the r bond corresponding property so we need to collection dot id dot tracks equals to It is <laughs> then collection push the value until the end of the albums create an empty array before adding the new value to the albums corresponding property now collection dot id dot tracks dot push push what we want to push here value i think hello Yeah. I tried something to break it. You wanted to push a value. Yeah. Hello. Value empty. Collection dot ID dot prop. I think we need to delete that prop. This is one condition. I will return it here, and if props is tracks but all one doesn't have a tracks property create an empty array before adding the new value to the all one's corresponding property if prop is tracks and value is not empty push the value onto the end of the all one's existing tracks so we are pushing the value here and we are creating array here
if prop is not tracks and value is not empty one more condition is there if props not equal to tracks and value not equals to empty update or set the value for the record albums property last into collection dot id dot prop equal to value so meswin are you there yeah i'm here <coughs> that the pass already what's the problem i just wrote three conditions here and let's see how it goes if prop is not tracks and values not empty if props is tracks values not empty props is track So we are passing five four three nine artist A B B A five four three nine is this one and album is A B B A gold. So we are up. We should update. Let's see. Run the test and see. Box is not defined. Okay, somewhere I will use props. Yeah, you have to say prop, not books. Yeah, prop. Of of undefined where. Uh, 
आप इक्वल तो ट्राइब से read that console dot log collection dot id Shall we uh, break for the day and uh, just let this one be homework? Yeah, we will do it as a homework and discuss it on tomorrow. Yeah, because this one's pretty meaty, but because um, combine it's combining everything into this one project. Yeah. But uh, has anybody gotten a solution? I think we'll try for <clears throat> ten minutes and then we will wrap it. Okay, that's fine. We'll do ten minutes more, and then we'll call it a day. Wherever we're at, we'll uh, just pause, and the rest can be homework. And but uh, maybe we can get the solution here. Does anybody else want to share their uh, their solution so far?
Anyone got the solution? I, I haven't gotten it. No. Why don't we break for the day? And uh, did you get it? No. It's pausing some test button. Yeah. Yeah, I think, on this one, you just have to take it test by test. You know? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, it is that you have to go each line by line. Let's break for the day, but um, let's see if everyone can get the solution before next meeting. And uh, we'll also have React later. Yeah. Or for you guys okay. tomorrow. Or no, is it today? I can't remember. I think, yeah, it's tomorrow for you guys. Yeah, it's later in the day for me. Yeah. But um, anyhow, I'm happy that we made a lot of progress today, though. Yeah. Compared to other times. Almost. Probably uh, tomorrow or Saturday we finish this module. Yeah, we should easily finish this module. Yeah. I mean, we've just got one, two, three, four, six five, or five, seven, eight, nine. We've got eight more till the next project, and then we got nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, we have 16. 14, 15, yeah, 15 and 16. Yeah, 16. And then we get a uh, turn, ternary uh, outbreak. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. And then I'm kind of curious. Are there any projects we can do at this point? With After this one? Uh, we can do uh, the palindrome. I guess you need uh, more. You can try a calculator. Yeah. Well, it might be better to just hold off on the projects until ES6 is done. Yeah, I think these projects are just like programs only in the JavaScript section. Yeah. They, they are a bit advanced. Yeah, and then so they have to we want to solve these with. With the uh, ES6, you know, yeah, rather than basic, can, there are some basic algorithms also very useful. Yeah, we should. But the we other, the prior, we have all these other sections aren't near as long as, um, yeah, we can skip the regular expression for now, but with basic data structures and algorithm is all. Yeah, I mean, even ES6 is much shorter than this. Yeah, JavaScript after that, we will move on to ES6, so it will help in your React class. Yeah, ES6 knowledge will help to understand the React better. Yeah, well, let's uh, end the recording and we'll call it a day, but everybody continue to work on the project for the uh, record.